PGC 2022, we head to the ever lovely Aaron Girl. Yeah, it, listen, I'm actually like really, really excited for all this to happen. As you said, the teams are very, very top heavy. The fact that we get both Sonics and New Happy in the same lobby is just, oh, it's a blessing. Game number one, couldn't ask for a better matchup. Sonics, New Happy, big, big names. Of course, you've got the Freaks as well, Bagapa. I mean, Pio. Pio's an absolute iconic name yeah. for PUBG. Let's head underway, and it's a pretty decent playing path that it's we've right. got for game yeah. number one. So again, reminder, game one, 15 games for group A. They'll play five today, and then they'll get a day off, and then they'll play five, and then they get a day off, yeah. and then they'll play five. And the good news about that, Cameron, is the fact that they can sort of bot review between days. Yeah, yeah, they don't have to worry about, oh, I need my eight hours of sleep, I need to get some good rest, good food, and then swing on in. Uh, they can take the entire time to sit and watch. They're going to want to be paying attention to Group B as well, of course. Certainly right? so, yeah. But their goals should be Group A. They have a couple of days off once the group stage all finishes, and they can then catch up on all what they've sort of like... Dave here, 22 Esports are going to just parachute away. But this is the big fight, Cameron. This is it. In fact, it's Tickleton and another member of SGG on the roof. Not exactly going to be punching out, but oh no! Oh, that's not a good start. Oh my days, Tickleton down at Sophia straight away with the micro Uzi. SGD making their presence known already here for PGC 2022. And it is unfortunate for the Sonics, but they were well and truly aware that this was going to be happening. Both of these two teams have been scrimming these hot drops. Unfortunately for Tickleton, he didn't quite get the right drop. Yeah, I mean, you always got to play a little bit of luck when you try and go for drops like this, especially landing on the exact same roof. Mime got tagged up a little bit as well, but a great trade by Shrimzy. Shen could potentially get revived, but it's a good knock nonetheless. Yeah, very good. Uh, Shen should be safe for now, and obviously it's going to be up to SGD if they want to play for the revived. Sophia, close by still, that Uzi Shrimzy as well. Uh, but so far, hectic start, and a start that the Sonics would not wanted to have had. Not only that, losing Tiggleton, but just losing... Could try and strike back, but he also could take this opportunity to try and retreat. And I have just sort of momentarily had a glimpse at the, the map and doesn't seem to be any spot fires elsewhere. Everyone else just calmly looting, basically in the drop spots that we expected. So everything has so far played out as we anticipated, of course, starting with this Pachinki battle in which now SGD will go on the hunt as four. So four versus three for the Sonics after losing their star player. And obviously now they've got roof control as well. I mean, they are primed here to really cause a significant upset in just game number one. He's holding the angle. Teammate's also going to run on him, but Leo gets a couple attacks onto Mime once again. Mime is able to thread the needle, make his way closer to his teammate, but Leo's position being given away. Shrimzy's trying to take the trade, but these corner peaks, it's... Oh! Oh! Wow. Oh! Wow, for, for both of them, really. They both just... Copping one there. It's Shrimzy comes off second best, though. Mime with the nade. That one does go through, and Atwin actually does get the down onto Leo. So the Sonics, they have to pounce on this, Camry. They have to be aggressive and try and get one player back down the other way. S12 out for Mime. Shen oh! can't win that one. Shot to the face. So they're going to lose Shen, the star player for SGD, gone. Now they've lost Leo as well. Down to just Sophia and Jervis. Oh, and you saw Sonics with the disadvantage. Mime and Shrimzy especially poking and prodding, but they found the opportunity. They found the opening with Atwin also on the high ground covering fire. They really swung this back into their direction. Confirmed two kills. Can they find the other two without taking any more damage? Well, that, that's the next part of the equation here, right? It feels like in some ways they've gotten over the big hurdle here, losing Tiggleton, but then you get your mental sort of Ooh. restored. They're pushing nicely here as well, playing off of each other. They've got the numbers. They play it really well. But Jervis from the roof gets the down onto Shrimsy. Are they going to lose another player for this? Because in all honesty, Kemi, if they get out of here with the three players alive for Sonics, you take that with getting four kills back the other way, but they're still going to get rid of Jervis. Yeah, last player on his team. He knows that he at least tr wants to try and get some revenge. Leaving as a solo at this point in the game isn't going to be that valuable. He's going to try and get at least one more kill if he can finish Shrimsy off. That's something, but Mime is there with the covering and the smoke as well. Jervis is ready oh, Jervis! for a twin rotation. Oh, wow. Oh, for a second. What a shot, though, from Mime jumping right on top of his head. And had he messed that one up, Sonics yeah. were out. They were gone. Almost a heroic play from Jervis. Jervis all in a hit PGC 2022. See whether or not they can back it up, Cami. Of course, as the lads on the desk were saying, a pretty decent start for those inside of the top eight already. Yeah. And, and it, it looks like you could just sort of 
uh, seal and, and deliver it already. That is job done for Group A, but oh, obviously okay, 14, okay. 14 yes. games to go. Long <laughs> way to go as we head into match number two. Yeah, 19 points uh, for New Happy, 14 points for Overpeaker is definitely a good start, but with the amount of games they have to play, they still need to try uh, and get as many points as they can. What is good, though, is that they don't have as much pressure. They're not going to be coming back from some sort of major deficit, which is going to be helpful for not feeling, you know, making mistakes or just some sort of unforced error. Play path for match two. Look very, very good. Right over yeah. Jinky, straight through the middle, which is where I'm assuming we will be heading back to very shortly, Probably. of course, to see this hot drop. There were a couple of others that were mentioned as well. Narveen, 22 Esports, there's Cerberus as well, and Overpeakers, but Cerberus looks like they will be going farm as they did in the last game, so I think we can maybe put a, a cross through that one in terms of watching that. And there were some shots over towards Rozhok as well. Yeah, so that wasn't as big of a conversation, but the standoff in Rozhok school apps between Donawa and Twisted Minds, it is definitely something that could bubble over into some action, but really, again, we're going to be looking at dead center of the map here, Sonics versus SGG, not landing on the same roof, Oh, Sophia no. gets a shotgun, okay. Deja vu, hello, it still might just happen Ooh. anyway, Tickleton running away, Sophia drops down, has that shotgun, I think Tickleton's in trouble here, but a shot from Mime, oh, the quick response, Mime time arrives and saves Tickleton in match two, Sophia will fall first this time around, oh, and a doozy of a circle. Oh man, this is, I mean, this is great for T5, but this is really, really rough for everyone else, essentially. There's a lot of water, it's not the most, it's not the worst, but it is definitely something to take note of. Well, I mean, we'll take note of that one shortly. We still have the focus, of course, here in Pajinki. Now, Sophia, not out for the count. Getting revived. I haven't heard no bell, and he's going to get revived. So a little bit more work to do for Sonics and bringing down the numbers of SGD. So Sophia back up, and of course has that shotgun. Jervis now at the UMP. Tiggleton, what's he found? An M416. You'll take that. That's not too bad. And obviously for the Sonics, they do strike first blood, but uh, the war's not over here. The battle has just begun, and the nade landing onto the face of Tiggleton. Half health. Sophia still obviously trying to find yeah. some medical supplies to get back up to full health. That grenade might have forced that player to not hold that angle, allowing Sophia to try and rotate further. And yeah, they got to find some meds. That's the that's the big problem. Even if you get the revive, you still got to find that first aid kit. And when you're also looking for weapons, looking for armor, looking for grenades, looking for, for everything else to try and deal with, you have to focus on so many different things. Grenades going towards Tig. He's going to be able to dodge them. Whoa, what an angle. But this sort of footsie game that we're still seeing with the first blood not really being first blood just yet, Oh man, this is the pressure is rising. At some point, is someone just gonna leave? Well, that's the other part of it. A, a prolonged fight is really going to affect both teams. H Win is not going to be able to spot Jervis just yet, but I wonder if Jervis might spot H Win on top of that roof if he beats Ooh, it the right time. Okay, that. so Jervis has intel, intel that H Win does not have. Yeah. You can see he's crawling forward, trying to trying to wait for H Win to shoot at someone else before he strikes, and H Win is going to find a new target. But he is not unprepared for someone to be in this sewer system. It's all going to be a matter of timing, not just in timings of the peaks here. It's the timings of oh. do you want to keep on this fight? h -win, though, with the information that he's giving over to his teammates, he's trying to isolate, he's trying to triangulate, and telling the rest of his squad where to go with the shots. Oh. Don't get the knock. Reveals Jervis' position, and he has a first aid kit. Yeah, now intel for Sonics has been gathered. Of course, h -win will be able to heal back up. Jervis pushing into his building. We've got little spot fires now starting to really show up all in the Pachinki. High ground for h -win. pulls out the shotgun, both half health, and really both in a position where Nook's oh. not Nick shot would have got it. He's whiffed it. Jervis survives. Final first aid kit for him. Oh, what an intense battle taking place here in Pachinki. Darn you kneecaps. You got to move past your limbs in order to shoot directly below you. h almost was able to tag that. But again, it's still continuing on this fight between the two squads. Mime is able to wrap around from the south side, able to come in as the flanker, as the pincher. But with so many buildings to check, he can't just rush forward. Jervis has been taken down. Sophia, though, with an aid. Oh, it's not too bad, but it's not good enough and doesn't find what he was searching for. Has another one. We'll probably prime this one a bit longer. Throws it out. Is this one good? Well, that one was too short. Close. He's got one more. Maybe third the time average. is the charm. Four. Cut so the difference. Oh, and that one goes too long again. Hatrin surviving, warding them off. So they get rid of Jervis. Now they got the four versus three. And Mime still lurking towards uh, the more southern end. I think Mime almost might find a kill. Oh, oh spotted through the grass! Sophia spots him! Peeking through the leaves! 
He gets the down, expecting one more! Tiggleton gets tagged. He can still play off of that position, though, without revealing much more. Ten bullets left for Sophia. Gotta make them count. But watch h one h one still on the high ground. Both of these players were rushing forward. And there he is. He's gonna try to get oh, some damage back. But Leo with the shots. The trade just keep going back and forth. The blows keep going back and forth. And Sophia says, it's, it's time. I gotta finish you, bro. I'm sorry. Bye-bye, Mime. It's over for you. And again, for the Sonics, it's not gonna be a clean exit from Pachinki. In this case, it might end up being worse. But Tiggleton gets the revive onto h win and again, remember, with this kind of circle that we've got, prolong the fight here, neither team's going to walk out of this very happy in this game. Yeah, this this is one that these teams both are wishing. Whoever won, won a lot sooner. Everyone else is already rotating. Everyone else is already rotating. Noise made a oh! lot of noise. He oh! one, but he gets down by Sophia with a shotgun up close. That'll do. h -win has three, three shotgun shells to try and deal with Sophia and Leo. They will look to flush Tiggleton. It's a big one, but Shrimsy actually covering him. h going to get caught. Oh, what are you doing? Both of them peeking at the same time. SGD have just one more to deal with. But it's Shrimzy who gets the headshot knocked out onto Sophia. How has this ended up in a one versus one? Shrimzy and Leo. If Leo wins this though, he can get quite a few more revives. In fact, going for one right now. Ooh, he's gonna get one, but the angle is found. Shrimzy able to confirm Sophia. He but now Shen intel. back up. Shotgun rushing forward. Oh, who's gonna peek this one? Shen Lowe, probably not the best player to do so. Leo watching though, can go for the trade. If he does get knocked down, it's not that bad of an option. Shrimzy really just fighting for himself here, fighting for the Sonics to not go in last place. SGD have done a tremendous job here in match two. Oh, and now oh, Bilbo, you're home! No. Why are they here? Hello! The reinforcements for North America arriving, but probably not friendly ones. They're actually on both sides. You also have Poonage all the way on the south side with the Mosin in his hands. It's clean up time. Gammy, unfortunately, this is what happens when it prolongs, when it yeah. goes for too long. People are seeing in that kill feed that it's kind of 50-50, and it's like, we should just go over there and clean up whatever's left over from these two teams. Shrimsy, Sonics, it's not looking like Erangel is going to be a pleasant time for them today. Okay, I, I was going to say, it might be a good idea to see if you can't find something, but your hoe don't want to stay around too long, or else they might suffer the same fate of just being a prolonged engagement outside of the zone. So they're going to move on, or at least reposition. They're not gone just yet. They're ready to gatekeep. They're ready to kneecap any of the survivors that do try and leave. So Shen, Leo, they have been able to sort of just uh, heal up, take a bit of time. Now they can push together. Shen is very much the most aggressive player on this SGD roster. Probably the best player. Whoa. First shot, Shrimsy, not bad. Pulls out M4. He's got a bit of time. He can actually just drop down, play the stairs now with the shotgun. He's going for it. Big play from Shrimsy. Now on a one versus one. And honestly... I, I don't think that uh, Leo can stick this. He's anticipating the push up the stairs. Watching it. Oh, he's going slow now. He's going to push up. He's got to make a decision, Shrimsy, and he makes one. Shoots, but doesn't land. Oh, oh Leo pushed down, down the stairs, and Sonic's out of the game for match two. Still able to get the revive as well, so that's something to try and get a few more points. But get ready for your hoe. And there's also a couple other teams all current. Well, of course, after this, then two games of Miramar to follow for our five games for day one of PGC 2022. Once again, pretty decent plane path, a little bit more on the northern side going over Roshock, but yeah, lo and behold, we will of course be getting that Pachinki battle. And as we sort of solidified off the back of match two, all the other little uh, spot fires that we had around the map, maybe yeah. on match one, did obviously dissipate. We didn't see anything over towards Farm and Milter again. Really not a whole lot over towards Roshog. Nothing from the likes of Na'Vi and 22 Esports. Uh, we had a, a nice circle, crazy circle as well. So we've had two uh, ends of the extreme. I'm not sure what we're going to get for match three. Maybe Sosnovka Island. This plane is just a touch north. So no, it's not going to be Sosnovka yeah. Island. It might be Severny. It might even be Zarki. The fact that this is the most extreme plane path we've had does mean that it's been fairly fair these first couple of games. Fairly but yeah, fair it is. Fairly fair. I like that one. Wordplay, man. Let's I'm get out of the way for round number three between Sonics and SGD. It's 1-1 at the moment between the two teams. Sonics, of course, winning out in match one. SGD winning out in match two. We'll see who's going to take out match three and I guess technically get the edge between the two teams going 
into uh, the next uh, Erin Girls in day two for this group. There is that circle. It is going to be more towards the eastern side, over towards the Atsnaya field. So something a little bit different so far for all three games of Erin Girl. That's a nice treat. And something different this time Ooh. is that early battle that we usually saw from Tiggleton and Sophia has not taken place. Yeah, they've sort of, they keep rearranging exactly where they drop. Here are the corners are held and damage is shared. But no knock. And it's just Jervis's position be given away once again. Pop out the window, get it back away because, you know, with, if experience says anything, there could easily be a push from another angle. So he's going to get back to the safety of his teammates. And that, unfortunately, at this point, it looks like it might just be a repeat of the previous game where it's going to take eight whole minutes. Fortunately, it's in the zone, yeah. but on the edge. Uh, and that's sort of what I wanted to sort of touch on is the fact that match one ended pretty quickly, right? So it was not too bad for the Sonics and they were able to have somewhat of a decent game. Yeah beyond the Battle of Pachinki, but for SGD in the last game, you know, it was that prolonged fight, and Yahoo even ended up, of course, making their way over, and so it was probably not very beneficial for either of the two teams, and yeah, as you said, this one already shaping up to be another long one. Look at this flank by Shen. Look at this rotate. He already has an AK. He already has an AR in hand, and a couple of first aids as well, so if, if he gets tagged and not knocked, then he can continue to be a threat from this Far south position, but the angle is found by Tickleton. He might have to push it a little further, Shen, because the push from Sonics towards the main group of SGD could happen, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Not enough damage. Really, these players are going to be looking for the full confirmed knock. Yeah, and so far in at least the first two games, neither team, of course, able to get away cleanly. So we, we haven't had any clean sweeps. It's it's not as if the either team have been able to... You get that 4-0 clean sweep and you do feel uh, a little bit more victorious in being able to sort of conquer the, the battle that has yeah. been taking place. It, it has been so even between these two teams. And I wonder if that has surprised the Sonics. You know, we think about the scrims that they have been ha having. From, from what I heard, it wasn't too bad here in Pajinki. SGD did win a couple themselves. But when Sonics were winning, they were winning quite clean. That hasn't happened, of course. I mean, practice is practice, right? Yeah. People talk about the, the quality of scrims can be really fluctuate, but the one thing that you can always practice is these hot drops. And so SGG might have easily really figured out what was going on, how Sonics like to play this, what they, to expect for it. And in fact, even in game one, you already saw that they were... Well, Twisted Minds sort of changed the story from what looked to be uh, an accelerated of GX's game. Is this going to be uh, the, a sense that maybe they might just actually split off from each other here and not force the fight. It's a it's a yeah. sort of northern side, southern side uh, parlay that has taken place. And I do wonder if, if you're the Sonics off the back of the way the first two games have played out, you're not inside of the top eight. Like, it's very early days, but still. Do you think... Nice shot from Mexi. Good patience. Oh, well, the standoff is over. Ooh. Shen! He got aggressive. He pushed up. Now, forget about the south. He's pushed into Sonic's territory and taken out both Mime and Hadrian. They're fallen. Well, we know Shen... Likes to be aggressive. He leads from the front for SGD, and he's done so once again. Had an incredible tournament at PCS 7 APAC, and they can really get aggressive off of this. I mean, he's really match three. It's, it's two individual teams that have their own identities. It's nothing to do with the major region as a whole. I don't appreciate your point of comment here, but Jen is going to continue to push, which is relatively free. So Tiggleton and Shrimsy, the two best rated players for Sonics, still alive. Probably anticipating for SJD to sweep through Pachinki. Here is the replay of Shen. Uh, and that's a wonderful opening kill onto Mime. So Mime actually was essentially the one pushing somewhat over towards Shen's position. And I do wonder, is Mime being caught off guard there? H-Win couldn't quite get the trade. Shen's played that perfectly. He has essentially created two 1v1s, timed them both well. Yeah. Really, really good Micro play there from Shen. He's continuing to look for more. But the problem is, going any further from this position could be very, very dangerous. He has the safety of the sewer for now. But it's very limited on what space he can take with it. So instead, he's just scouting out. And hopefully, that information is going to allow the rest of his team to move forward themselves. Position in the Aznaya field is a very, very bold move. But I imagine it's a, a move that's going to put them in the middle of the action to try and get some kills. And that is very, very limited because who knows how long until another team tries to go into their position. Sonics, it looked like off of that final shift, wanted to rotate towards the north, but they ran into... 
I mean, you can do that, mate, but um, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way things are shaping up potentially for APAC in this game. So it does go north, gets away from that pond, of course, uh, water circle setting activated. Right onto Tiamba, who, well, they're actually dead last coming into this game, so they get some fortunes so far. SGD, they're going to make the push onto over Peekers. Oh, they might just avoid this one. I mean, talk about maybe the two most aggressive teams in the lobby at the moment. It's Shen that gets stopped down by Ming. Ming finished off by Nan. Sophia caught by Mexi. They are copying it from both sides on the rotation for SGD. So they won the Battle of Pachinki. They're going to lose the war at Stalba. They're going to be the first team out here, I think, at this position. A lot of teams, of course, in that minimap as Petulans gets the kill onto Leo. Jervis, the last one alive. This is another question of where in the world can you even go? There are very limited compounds, and you already had Bigapa and Tiamba here to grab them initially. Savior make that nine kills now for Overpeakers. And there goes the Sonics. North America. And I Yes, two more games to go here for Group A for Day 1, PGC 2022. Over to Miramar, Sandy Desert. Maybe new pastures could be arising for a lot of the teams that have struggled so far on Erangel. Maybe this is where they can turn it around. Yeah, I mean, that's the hope. That's the hope for all of these teams, isn't it? I mean, excluding the ones that are already in the top and they want to keep that run going. Man, oh, overpeakers! In fact, it's not even just overpeakers. It is just overpeakers, but not... A f a clip. Clip. <laughs> All right. Absolutely yep. amazing player. Just individually has more kills than I think from multiple entire teams, right? And a lot of those kills are from drive-bys. Yeah. That's the crazy part about it. The damage numbers as well, though, it's not just Clip, but Clip leading the way for the damage. But it's Ming Ming on top, then Clip, James, Maxi, and then Bard. I mean, that is insane that of the top five, it's Ming Ming, of course, absolute superstar, and then all of Overpeakers for the damage so far uh, that we had on Aaron Gull, and yeah, Clip leading the way in terms of all those kills. So as we do head to Miramar, of course, a little bit of the same, in the sense that Picardo is our new hot drop location of choice for SGD and Sonics. Of course, uh, to note, it's 2-1 in favor of SGD. It is. It was a new map. It's a new day. And Diggleton has a mini 14. Oh, Leo! Oh! Hedgewind does go down, but the trade is going to happen. He's trying to go for more. Yeah, uh, at least for Tickleton, he is going to be able to get an early kill for the Sonics. But they've lost Mime as well to Shen. So Shen, Sophia, both getting downs. One being converted into an elimination as well. That is another good start for SGT. Another disaster for the Sonics. And again, two games in a row, down to just two players remaining for the Sonics. I mean, this is shaping up to be almost like a... Uh, a disaster before their eyes. It's Tickleton and Shrimsy again. Yeah, but you cannot count these players out. They are always neck and neck in terms of the scoreboard. Tickleton is generally in the lead, but just barely. Shrimsy is a star player in his own right as well. A twin also could still get revived. You cannot discount that. They're going to have to go through SGD for that to happen. And they are rightfully so focused on the correct Sonics players alive. But if they win this out in the proper amount of time, they could get back up S3. I'm just going to be completely honest and say that it's good. Provided that SGD win <laughs> the battle here and win yeah. then match number five, Sonics have to leave. I'm sorry, but you've lost. And you have to make that decision at the end of the five game. Play Tickleton oh! out the open. Leo sets him down. Doesn't matter who you are. It's a free kill for Leo. And the Sonics continue to flounder at PGC 2022. Uh, there you go, Leo. Job done. They made him work for it, but Tigerton does go down in the end. It's all up to Shrimzy. How many points can he get in this round? Really in this fight, because moving into the circle as a solo player is going to be really rough on a Miramar. So much open transitional process in this map, in this circle. But we can get to that when we get there, because right now it is still Shrimzy, the last alive. And Shen, the way he's been playing, will be not shy at all. And looking to hunt down Shrimsy. Okay, Sophia's position given away now. So Shrimsy has something to play off of. As soon as he shoots, though, then that's information back the other way for SGD. And you have to commend them. You really do in some ways. A lot of people probably anticipated Sonics being able to deal with SGD quite lightly. And boy, they have stepped up big time. I'm not surprised having seen them up close and how good they were in PCS 7. How aggressive they can be. And Shen... A star player rising to the occasion has been so influential. 
influential in these hot chops, but don't forget, SGD are also in double digits on the total leaderboard, so it's not all roses for this team, despite them it having doesn't matter. Uh, coming getting, out on top. They're getting four points a game for free. They're still only in 11th. That's not top eight, and remember, it's <laughs> top eight is the goal. That's where you need to be. That is true. That is very true. There's another part to the tail. Oh, there's maybe another part to this tail here. Now, surely they don't both look the wrong way. Surely, Trimsy can't get both of them. He couldn't even get one at the moment. Flash goes down. That's going to be something that might help him out. Does obviously have the Tommy as well. I mean, why are they not pushing? They're so slow in this. Leo goes down. Sophia, so passive. Shen's like, get move out of the way. Let Shen through. That's Sophia that gets the kill anyway. Sonics are off to a disaster start at PGC 2022. It has been action-packed so far, and hopefully we've got one more stellar game coming your way. Miramar, of course, once again. And a quick reminder, tomorrow, Group B will begin their journey here at yes. PGC. Yeah, gives these teams a break, gets new teams for us to watch, have fun with, and see what that sort of lobby configuration is gonna work out. But look at the plane path here, I have to say, despite what history at least from, I, I don't know so much about APAC, but at least in America, is what history says is that the early games of an event, the plane paths are all over the place. So I like that things are getting polite here at the start. Yeah, uh, the, the circles have been a little bit all over the place. Sure. Plane paths have been on point. It's the good start that's the important part. Yes, it is. Well, starting well is typically okay. what you want to do. You know where I'm I going, know where with, you're that going one. with this. I know where you're going with this. <laughs> it's listen, Picardo. listen. And that's exactly where, well, it goes the same for SGD as well. I mean, you want to be starting well. What better way to start than three free points? Make it four sometimes, too. That's the way it's gone. It's a 3-1 scoreline for SGD over the Sonics. Of course, that's back on uh, Pachinki as well as Picardo. Sonics need uh -oh, to win this Sophia. one. I'm going to be honest. They need to win this one. Sophia, good little drop down. A mime now on the roof strand. It's same with Shrimps. H-Win. He drops down two. Yeah, so 3 1 is the uh, the scoreline here. Tickleton from across, landing some good tags onto Shen. So low, 1 HP, but alive. It's a good start damage wise for Sonics, but H Win goes down. The first knock once again goes against the Sonics boys. The circles, too. And you see the, the brief glimpse of it here for phase one. Shrimsy going for that first kill and has been able to get so and has a chance to go for the revive onto H win. Jervis with the Uzi. Shan's still low, hasn't been able to find it. Hey, Ward! Ward! What? Get out of here! This isn't your fight! Where have Overbeakers arrived from? They put the punishment into the Sonics, who have oh. now lost again two players. Again, it's a disaster in Picardo. I mean, look at how far ahead OP are. It makes perfect sense why they decide, you know what, They're gonna, these guys are going to keep dropping. OP are no strangers to this area because this, in their region, is where they go. Let's try and punish this themselves. Let's get some kills ourselves, and let's make sure that they can't catch up to us. 48 points, they don't need to worry at this point about falling out of the top eight. They are more than safe for now. I mean, things could change in the number of games we have going forward, but that's a future problem. Yeah, I mean, the, the adaptive play there of Overpeak is perfection. Nothing to lose, yeah. everything to gain, understanding full well that the battles that have been taking place, both on Pachinki and, of course, in now Picardo, have been uh, quite wary. No one's necessarily winning them cleanly. There's an opportunity, and boy, they take that opportunity. Look at Bard just watching, waiting. Uh, I mean, seriously, what a play. Not just in the shots, but the understanding yeah. of the scenario as to what's taking place. Over Peakers, they are looking extremely deadly here at PGC. And our SGD have the advantage here. Dickerson is still playing on the high ground, despite Overpeaker's uh, surrounding position on top of him. But it's because he still wants to use that range. He still wants to use those those high ground angles against SGD. I would honestly suggest right now that if Mime and Tickleton can group up, you get out of dodge. Yeah. You need to play the game a little bit, get your feet wet. It's it's day one, and honestly, they have not been able to really... And it's towards the northeast, yep. even yep. more towards the north. Already a few teams inside, but the distance isn't ridiculous for Sonics right now, which, you know, obviously coming in from the center, but if they wait too much longer to make this retreat that you're suggesting, and I'll be honest, I kind of agree with you, let's hope that Mime in this vehicle agrees as well. But either way, if they take too long, there's not going to be much space for them to even try and go to. I pose you this question, though. Do, do you count this as a win for SGD? In some ways, they've had some very significant help. Obviously, for SGD, they don't have a single kill. All of those uh, kills of Sonic's going the way of overpeakers, but... The survival is more the win than getting the kills and getting uh, the points themselves, right? Because it's all about what you can do after this point. You're not going to get top eight just by getting four kills. 
every single hot drop if that is the best case scenario that you get. Yeah. So in a way, yes, but there is going to be, of course, an asterisk behind that. For a very, very, and I'm a very brief second in the peripheral of Tiggleton was Sophia, but he did not spot him as he's making that run across the uh, western side of Picardo, just on the outskirts, uh, hugging that wall. Ooh. And Jervis has, of course, spotted Tiggleton. I'm not sure if that has been information gathered for Tiggleton, though, onto Jervis. And uh, they are still taking some time. Well, now he, he definitely does know. Obviously, for SGD, they do have that player advantage. Overpeak is still not really in the area anymore either, so it does kind of go back to SGD v Sonics. Overpeak is obviously understanding with this circle, it is best to get a move on. This is our previous match, and this was a significant moment that allowed, obviously, Twisted Minds to get further into this circle. Alia with a big shot in the uh, AWM onto Balefrost, and obviously prior to that, it was Na'Vi that were pushing onto Yahoo. And we were actually just talking about this off-air, and it felt like all three teams did as best as they honestly could yeah. of the situation at hand. Yeah. And now Sonic's doing the best that they can, which is gonna be a retreat away. They didn't just immediately hop in the vehicle and, and book it, right? Oh, but Sophia has an angle, he's landing a couple of shots, pulls out the car, doesn't land the bolt. Gets another attempt at it. I mean, these are hard shots to land. Oh, very shot. Yeah, incredibly difficult. But do you get a bit of a free shot? And he did take his chance. How but aggressive? Surely you're not pushing. Come on. Was Real back. He is going to get confirmed. It's going to be another kill for the Sonics. They're going to be happy about that one. Jumping over and chopping with that point. Oh, shit. And Pigopod finally find their way into the zone, or at least close to it, find themselves face to face with SGD. Pigopod, it's been rough for them today. It has. 17 points. Shen had a really good position. Punished them big time. Pio, Pio has been able to heal up. And Jervis has made sound here. So two heart playing off of that. Only auditory information though. Jervis keeps on running. Two heart tracking him as best as he possibly can from what he can hear. He may just spot him and now will do so. Fires and fires rapidly. Jervis gets punished by two heart. Plays a very patient game. Gets rewarded for it. Sonics are out though. They're gone. Day one. Absolutely in the bin. Bottom two could be last if they're a top five have a big one, but they would need to have a big one and not in a good position either. SGD still trying to trade back. Jervis has not been confirmed just yet. Song Jong has, so they go pot down to two. And one of them is incredibly low on life. Pio needs an opportunity to use a first aid kit and running away, he's gonna have to force away from that fight in order to do so. That leaves two heart by himself in a one versus two. Not a bad nade from Sophia. Just on the wrong side of the Darcia, uh, on the Murado, I should say, obviously, in the end. The second one follows this one from Shen. Pio, last one alive. A rough day for Bagapa. Spots Shen through the window. Ooh. The nade onto Sophia. Don't count out Pio. He can do some crazy things. And now SGD are on the ropes. Shen, though, well, it's young versus old in some ways. The new and the old guard doing battle. Shen comes up big. Circle shifting around. It's moving around so much today. Now over towards Na'Vi Cerberus. And again, what I was sort of saying, for 22, they find themselves in these good positions, but it's one or two players left yeah. alive. And not a lot of control for it either. But Danua, they have good control here on the south. They heard the fight. They saw the fight. And they want to make sure that no one come out alive. Salute finds the angle. The revives that Shen thought that he was able to get for his team. Get back up S3. That's going to get pulled out from him. Yeah. Oh, nice shots back, though. Not enough, though, to find the kill. Obviously, Pio will, will get one of them.